We've got Sunday afternoon baseball here at the corner of third and King. It's the Giants and Red Sox. It's game three and today game three and the final game of the series here from Oracle Park. Game time weather is brought to you by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Buy your ride wristbands online and save up to twenty dollars per person. Sixty six degrees. It feels warmer than that mainly because it is full of sunshine and it's a bit breezy. Uh, let's check out the wind at the ballpark today and it's a sort of a trickling of wind uh, compared to what we've been watching here the last several weeks but it's a pretty fair ballpark as you're getting carried to both sides we don't anticipate a lot of problem with pop ups yet however stay tuned next couple hours it usually intensifies pretty much a standard and gorgeous day here at Oracle Park. So let's take a look at Alex Cora's lineup. It'll be Ref Snyder to lead things off, then Turner, Devers, and the former giant Adam Duvall. Yoshida is going to hit in the fifth spot, then it's Arroyo, Verdugo, Reyes, and the catcher, Jorge Alfaro, will hit ninth. On the hill today for the Giants will be the opener, Scott Alexander. Alexander, 34 years of age. 6'2", 195 pounder out of Cardinal Newman High School in Santa Rosa. He's a six year veteran. This is what he has done this year, his third time opening a game. He's 6 1 with a 3 4 1 ERA. One of the best sinker ballers in all of the National League West. And rare to see his type of uh, sink with uh, being a left hander. You see his pitching arsenal it is a uh, StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud. It's a 93 mile an hour average on the sink. Uh, the slider is best secondary pitch and an occasional change up more to righties than lefties. But really when his back's against the wall you're going to see that sinker. It's a good one. So here we go is Rob Ref Snyder. Gets ready to stand in as he will lead things off. Boston won by a final of three to two on Friday and the Giants won by that score yesterday. Here's the first pitch of the ball game, and it is a call strike. Hey, we get started on time at 105. Ref Snyder hitting 274, a home run, 26 driven in, and a swing and a miss, nothing in two. He had a pinch hit single on Friday night. Red Sox come in in fourth place seven back of the Orioles but they're playing good baseball on the ground to third for Davis on the run he throws and that's how this game gets started a 5 3 put out. All right, let's take a look at the Giants defense is brought to you by Land Rover Defender starting in their outfield from left to right will be Slater Matos and Conforto good assist arms across the board Crawford and Davis on the left side Schmidt and Flores on the right side Blake Sable. He'll be in the squad putting down the signs. Welcome back Brandon Crawford and we welcome the sounds greeting. Justin Turner. Turner on the first pitch lifts one to deep left but not deep enough Two down. All right let's check out our Nissan keys to the game both in do it again another opener. Giants 12 and 4 this year with an ERA right around 3.00. And by the way, get the money hit. Yesterday they were 1 for 13. They set the table all day long. They just couldn't get the hit that knocked in the runs today. That'll be the key. We had a little interaction between Turner and Scott Alexander. Friendly teammates. Former teammates with the Dodgers. Here's Devers who takes a strike. Alexander originally a six round pick by the Kansas City Royals but he went from the Royals to the Dodgers. That's where we really got our, our first he, chance to look at him made his career there. We wanted him as soon as we saw him. So I'm going to miss nothing in two. Uh, who do we got the empires today Manny Gonzalez behind the plate the crew chief Adrian Johnson at first Quinn Wolcott at second Junior Valentine at third Gonzalez. He's a pretty consistent zone you don't get big corners with him but he's fair.
One ball and two strikes. Devers, big power. 25 home runs. 76 runs batted in, and that leads this team. And he had a pitch to hit, and he fouled it back. A hanging slider, middle in. That's what the power hitters like to see. Okay, he's built for October. <laughs> yes, he is. Devers is 0 for 4 yesterday. Two and two. It's Sable behind the dish today. Wait, Sable doing the catching. Two balls, two strikes. Slowly hit. Wilmer Flores shoveling to Alexander in a nice inning for the Giants lefty. Slater to lead things off. And then the rook, Marco Luciano, he's the DH. The hero yesterday, JD Davis, will be the clean and pitter. Conforto, Mato Sabo, Casey Schmidt, eighth, and Brandon Crawford, ninth. On the hill today, the opener for the Red Sox will be Brennan Bernardino. Bernardino from Valencia, California, product out of Cal State Dominguez Hills, 6'4, 180 pounder. This will be the fifth time that he has opened a game. 2 3 1 ERA, 39 strikeouts in 35 innings. Let's take a look at the Statcast 3D powered by Google Cloud as to what he throws. Well, kind of a, a sinker. Slurvy breaking ball. He calls it a curveball, but it's kind of a slurve. It's a little bit, a little bit lazier than a, a quick curveball. And he will feature a uh, changeup, but he likes that sinker. Very similar to the numbers of uh, Scott Alexander. Here's Slater, one for six in the series. That one hit led the ball game off yesterday for the Giants in the bottom of the first, and then he eventually scored the first run. Oh, and two. Giants come in nine games over the 500 mark. They're 29 and 23 at home, but they're three under 500 against the American League. They're 14 and 17 against the AL. Slater out swinging. Let's take a look at the Red Sox defense. It's brought to you by your Bay Area GMC dealers. Starting in the outfield from left to right, it'll be Riff Snyder, Duvall, and Verdugo, the best arm in center field and in right field with Duvall and Verdugo. Reyes and Devers on the left side, Arroyo and Turner on the right side. Jorge Alfaro, he'll be in the squad putting down the signs. Moore Flores, big day yesterday. He went three for five. Overall in the series, four for nine. He's inching up to that 300 mark. He has been on fire since early June. Bernardino, a pretty good story. I mean, he's 31 years old. He's a rookie. I mean, he's, as he mentioned, originally signed in 2014, and uh, I mean, he's been around. He's played all over in minor league ball. He's played in Mexico, and here he is in the big leagues at age 31, still a rook. It might. We've said this before. You cheer for guys like that. You really do. I mean, he's paid his dues to be here. And you saw the numbers. I mean, he's having a good year, taking an opportunity. And he's cashing in. Wilmer Flores gets the count to three and one with Marco Luciano on deck. And it made it look like he was taken all the way. It's three and two. There are the home blowers out there in McCovey Cove. Uh oh. Got him on the outside corner. That doesn't happen very often. 
Well, I was surprised on the 3-1 pitch. Yeah, Took that fastball. I guess he was looking for a breaker ball, and then he just paints him on the outside corner, 3-2. A couple of hits yesterday for Marco Luciano. The impressive hit he had yesterday was the one he went to the opposite field. Well, they told us that he will use the whole field. You saw the numbers. They hit 235 on the year, but his on base percentage, very, very good. And really, on base percentage means a lot in this organization. You see, Brad Grimm's the number that he gave Marco Luciano, number 37. One and two. Breaking ball is a good one. It's big. It's kind of that hybrid between a slider and a curveball. So one and two with Davis to follow. Back foot slider, good location. That's pretty good take. Stripling getting loose. Pulled foul, Mark Holbert. Ball dude down the third base line. Killer Kowalski not happy about that. There's the killer. Fantasy camp veteran. And over at first base, we have Bert Strain today. Foul the other way. Killer Kowalski is one of the few ball dudes that doesn't hide behind the tarp. No, no. He it almost looks like he's look playing for the bunt. <laughs> it's three and two. He wants to play guess. so bad. <laughs> he's, he's in the starting position. He's in the blocks. He's ready to go. Three and two to Luciano. And he'll take the walk. Nice at bat. Let's check out our stats with Lowe's. J.D. Davis' season on first pitch at bat. Rankings in the major league. Well, his average is second. Hits second. Home runs fourth. And RBI's first. Likes the first pitch. What about... In the ninth inning against Kenley Jansen. Likes the first pitch. Sent everybody home happy with a walk off home run last yesterday. Off the foul pole. On the first pitch. Declines that one and it's 1 and 0. Sharp ground ball, and this is Reyes to retire the side. Second inning coming up. Celebrate all summer long. <clears throat> Good look right into the city of San Francisco. As Alexander goes back out to face Adam Duvall. And Duvall takes a strike. Duvall yesterday went 0 for 3 with a strikeout. But you talk about dangerous. Whew. I mean, you look at the guy and look, he's a center fielder. He, he's just a good athlete. I mean, he's built like Jim Tomey. Go glove winner, all star. He's had a nice career. Giants product. Former 11th round pick. Lots and lots of power. And he can run. Right at Matos, who comes in and he makes the catch lunging forward. 
Well, the Giants uh, are offering a, an opportunity to well, come to a ball game and check out a suite. Friends, family, colleagues, experience the suite. 175 bucks a person. Go to sfgiants.com slash suites. They are a blast. Here's Yoshida who takes a strike. Toughest guy in the league to strike out. Uh, 12 home runs, 53 runs batted in, hitting over 300. And right now it's 0 2. With Christian Arroyo to follow. Got him. For strikeout for Alexander. And here comes Gabe Kapler. Take a look at the strikeout. Good quick slider. Got him to swing over the top. Do not strike somebody out because you're going to get taken out of the game. I guess so. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your trusted oil change tune up and brake experts. So Ross Stripling is coming in. Alexander with a smile. It's nothing, nothing. Statcast, all the teams get this, and it gives you an idea of how the bullpen is being used. And you can take a look. The white numbers are the ones that were thrown uh, recently, yesterday. And uh, the orange colors are the ones that were thrown in the last three days. And if you get the, the lines through it, that means you haven't thrown at all. So you can just get an idea of the wear and tear and the number of pitches that are used by each guy in a bullpen. Very clear to define and very, very, uh, very good information when you're trying to take care and manage your bullpen. Keep them healthy. So here's Ross Stripling. Take a look at the numbers for Stripling. This will be his 16th appearance. Really whittled down that ERA. It was in the eights, and now he's got it into the fives. Stripling, 33 years old. He's in his eighth year at the big league level. Facing Arroyo. We had a chance to talk with Patrick Bailey before the game today, and he was talking about how well Stripling's been throwing the ball. He found his mechanics about five starts ago, or five appearances ago. Yeah, we had a chance to visit with Patrick Bailey for about 20 minutes, and it was enlightening and fun. It's fun because he's a rookie, and he's having fun. But his answers didn't sound rookie-like. No, I mean, it sounded to me like he was in command of the speed of the game. And really, for a catcher, that's one of the concerns you have when you bring a rookie catcher up. Can he handle a staff? Can he handle the speed of a game? Got him. And that'll end the inning. Giants are coming up. Conforto, Mato, Sable, nothing, nothing. Comes from the fans in the stands. Let's check out the barehander. And this guy is built for October. And uh, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, if this is a Savannah Banana game, the hitter is out. How about that? So if a foul ball goes in the stands and a, and a fan catches it, you're out. I think that's a great rule. Well, it'd be a great rule here because of all the people that bring their gloves, thanks to you. This is Conforto back to the game. And the bananas are here with their their uh, the team that they play every day the party animals. There they are. Not afraid to have a good time. All you got to do is watch one of their games. Well they were in Sacramento last night and your son uh, Cole and his wife Rachel my son Chase his wife Alex they went there and watched them play. Said the place was packed they had a blast. These guys right here are doing a lot for baseball. They are. And they're having fun doing it. So Conforto turns the volume the other way. 
Anyway, with the team you're talking about, they were Tuesday they were in San Jose, Thursday they were in Fresno, and as you mentioned, last night in Sacramento. Anyway, here's the hit by pitch. Take a look at the fastball. They didn't do anything but plug Conforto. But this is how you protect yourself. And for all you young hitters out there, you see how he turns his shoulder. It's easier to take the ball in the back than it is in the chest, and you protect your face. Here's Matos. Loves that first pitch, but takes this one for a ball. Still hurts to get hit in the back, but that's how you do it to protect yourself. Did he get hit again, or did he swing? No swing. Got his back leg. I mean, you've seen it, right? Where a guy gets hit, but yet he went around, and that was close. Right, let's take a look and see if he did swing. No, it did not, and it did indeed get him. Glancing blow, Schinberger night. Not that it feels good. Dave Bush comes out. John Schreiber in the pen getting ready for the, the Red Sox. Right hander. You know, when, when we played the minor leagues, oftentimes you would get Max packed in the clown prince of baseball. He was fantastic, he was fun. You get Eddie Fainer, who was the king in his court, right. the four man softball team, and Eddie Fainer was, you couldn't hit him. San and Diego chicken? The, the chicken. He'd go uh, and, and make the tour around the minor leagues. And, and the Savannah Bananas are doing that very thing, and they're getting people excited about the game of baseball. Their rules are different, but I really applaud this, this group for what they're doing because they're really good at it, and they're having fun, and they're making baseball fun. Sabo with a good bunt. He might actually beat it out. And it's not in time. Just like his first major league hit. Well, he's a good bunter. I mean, you don't see a guy who's got the type of power he has bunt a lot, but if they're going to give it to you. And he lays down an absolute pearl. There wasn't a whole lot that Bernardino could do. And the other thing, too, about Sable, who's 6'4 and weighs 230 pounds, he can run. So Alex Cora comes out. We'll have a new pitcher. Bases are loaded with nobody out. Four dealers. One year ago today, Will Clark had his number 22 retired. In a pregame ceremony that included a huge gathering of Giants legends. The Thrills number 22 now hangs alongside 10 other retired Giants numbers. I am Will the Thrill Clark. I am part of San Francisco. And I am forever a Giant. Well. That about says it all, doesn't it? That is one of the greatest speeches I ever heard. <laughs> Will and his family have been here at the ballpark this week. What people don't know is he made that same speech his first day in spring yeah. training. <laughs> he waited a long time to make that speech. <laughs> Got a chance to see Will and his son Trey today as they came in to say hello. Here's Schmidt. Doesn't waste any time and he bangs this one foul. Conforto, Mato, Sable. Those are your base runners from third to first. See the numbers for John Schreiber's 21st appearance. Good numbers, 241 on the ERA. 21 strikeouts in 18 and two thirds. Basically a sinker slider guy, although he will foresee the ball and he's got to change up. I think Schmidt's in a swing mode. I like it. He's 0 for 3 in the series, but he did hit a ball very well last night with people on base, but it was a line drive caught. Oof. Low by an inch. Don't take it again. There's Will the thrill. 
he is as colorful a personality as he as that shirt. Yep, you're right. Alfaro made that pitch look really bad. It's two and two. Best arms in the outfield for the Red Sox are in center and in right field. They're exceptional. Good swing at a, a high fastball. Yeah, he's thinking, I just missed that one. <laughs> two and two. Big chopper. Another disappointing moment. For our ball dude down the third baseline. Steve Kowalski. Two balls, two strikes. Foul. Another disappointing. No. No DH for me. Yeah, he's a National League guy. He got a little hitch in his get along. That's all right. We all do. Yeah, we do. Another 2 2 pitch coming up. We got ourselves a battle here. Should I repeat what I said earlier? You think he's in the swing mode? Swing mode. Sinker, sinker, slider. I mean, four seam changeup. He's dragged him through the garden. He's showing him everything he has. It's an easy take. It's an easy take when you're trying to get out of the way of it. This is swing mode here, three and two. Pitch number 10 coming up. Nice play. They got him at third. Coming in to score is Conforto. But Devers saved a whole bunch of runs from scoring. It really was a great at bat from Casey Schmidt. And he'll have to settle with an RBI being the reward, but it could have been a whole lot better. To the 10th at bat, he hits a two hop bullet right to Devers at third. And his only chance was to get that out at third. Once he left his feet, he didn't trust going to first, realized I have a play right in front of me, and gets the force. It's big nice league pick. play. All the way around, big leagues. So here's Crawford. First at bat for Brandon Crawford in a while. Lines this one into center field, and this is going to be a double play. Giants are on the board. We've played two innings. It's one nothing, San Francisco. Toyota. Let's go places. Well, there's an island that for a long time you want to do a void. Yeah, now people pay to get over now there. Now they want to get over there. Here's Verdugo against Stripling, and there's a called strike. It's been a while since I took that tour, but every time that I've gone, it's been really enjoyable. You know, the one thing that amazes you is just how small it is. Yes, you're right. I, I think they never had more than a couple hundred guys over there. Pitches wide for Dugo. 
272 average. Face stripling quite a bit of time. 20 at bats. Two and two. Perdugo and Stripling both out of the Giants or, or the Dodger organizations. You know each other well. Right center field for Conforto. Well, Giants fans at Oracle Park, the D backs visit for a four game series tomorrow through Thursday. Corbin Carroll, boy, he's good, that young kid. It's a pivotal NL West showdown. SFGiants.com slash tickets. Get a chance to see our old pal Bob Brindley, who will be broadcasting with the D backs tomorrow. Always a joy to catch up. Reyes takes a strike. We, we point that out because today uh, his son Michael, who runs the video for the Red Sox, came in to visit us. Crawford backs up, makes it a tougher play, not a problem. I probably haven't seen Michael since he was on the team playing when we were all players. Well, I mean, he came out of college, played professional baseball, and then for the longest time he went in the Red Sox organization, wound up being a bullpen catcher for a long time. He wants to coach, and he will someday. Now he's running their video. And uh, it's amazing how. He has grown up because I haven't seen him in a few years either. Yeah. Here's El Faro, who's lots of power. And that's a 75 mile an hour breaking ball. Yeah, well, take that. Absolutely uh, a mistake. No intent here. If you're going to hit a guy, you're not going to hit him with a curveball. Despite the Giants having. Two guys get hit in this game back to back. Here's plus, Rev oh, Snyder. Plus, how far was a catcher? You can't hurt that body. Rev Snyder bounced out to third to open up the ball game. Taps it fouled. It's a ball and a strike. How about those Cincinnati Reds today? Playing the Dodgers. Jump down on top four nothing. That game in the third inning. See David Bell got an extension. Three years. He's earned it. Boy, has he ever I'm so impressed with some of the young players that they have? My goodness. One two pitch coming up. Is hit high down the left field line into that corner, and Slater will watch this one land in the seats. Couldn't wait to go back and give it to his son. Nice going, Dad. All right, let's get a picture for your mom. That boy. Conforto way out in Triples Alley, and that'll end the inning. Giants lead one nothing. Unfiltered at a bold 98.6 proof. The gin of choice for our San Francisco Giants. Beautiful shot. Hey, we have a pinch hitter, and it's Mike Yastrzemski. He's into good vibes. He has lines this one towards Triples Alley, and it's going to reach Triples Alley, and it's going to go to Triples Alley. But 
Verdugo with a really heads up play to keep it from being a triple. Well Verdugo knows how this ballpark plays. He knows Yastrzemski has good speed and he realizes I have to gamble. And what he does is he slides into the ball and stops it from getting all the way to the corner and that froze Yastrzemski as soon as Yastrzemski saw him get up he knows that Verdugo has a good arm and this play right here stops it from being a triple that's a great play. Wow. Little roller. Flores will be thrown out. As you can see Flores really still having a tough time running. Well he's been told to go 70 percent. I mean they want his bat in the lineup if it means that he can only run at 70 percent so be it. There you go. At one year old. He's trying he's got that finger out. Come on. That yeah, a There it is. I saw it. He's going dad. Infield is in for Luciano who dribbles this one foul. One thing that the skipper of the Red Sox Alex Gore has done he been very aggressive with runners in scoring position at third base the less than two outs he brings that infield in every time. In tight. There's Cora. Ball and a strike. The breaking ball started right out at the right or the left hip of Marco Luciano and he fouls it out of play. Got him. And he got the strikeout he was pitching for. Just a good sinker at 92. High sidearm delivery, and that thing just bottoms out. He gets him a swing right over the top. So now it'll take a hit or a mistake. And the hitter's J.D. Davis, who goes around and it's 0 1. Perfect slider. Another good one. But that one was low, so it's a ball and a strike. Foul back one and two. I think when you're hitting off a Schreiber, you're gonna see movement. I don't know from that arm angle if he could throw the ball straight. And a high fastball. And I'll end the inning. Fourth inning coming up. Is Mike Kruko. And if you are going to ask for the perfect weather day to play a game, today would be it. Today would be it. You don't get any better. This is a Chamber of Commerce day. And this game is feeling very much like the first two games of this series. 3-2 uh, victory for the Red Sox in game one 3-2 win yesterday for the Giants in game two. It's been all about pitching and defense and it feels the same way today. So here's. Shipling going after Turner. A couple of guys that played together for a long time. Turner against Scott Alexander hit a ball to deep left field that was caught. Giants have moved some people around in the outfield. Yastrzemski is now in right field. Conforto is in left. Giants will do this, but it's usually a little later in the game. Mm -hmm. 
So it's one and two with a pitch clock violation for Turner. That's exactly where he wanted to throw that ball right above the hands inside corner. As a dart and then you get a free strike and now it's a one two count you get a free shot at, at whatever location you want. Remember Turner got hit in the face this year so none of this is fun for him. Crawford from the outfield grass. One out. Well share in the booth are the brothers. Dave on the left he's ours. Now will on the left he's theirs he's the Red Sox radio play by play and uh, and they're going to share this inning in the same booth John goes over to the Red Sox radio side for an inning very cool. And I just wonder if that conversation is going something like well you know mom liked you better and <laughs> blah 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 right. Yeah, well, Dave would say, well, now, okay, you're finally in the big leagues, and it's time for you to pay for a meal now. Yeah, exactly. As Devers a half swing. But uh, their mom and dad, Mike and Carter, back in Virginia, watching, and I'm sure that they are beaming right now, as they should be. And if you ever get a chance to listen to Will Fleming, he does sound a lot like his brother. Yeah, he's very good. I think everybody out there knows how we feel about Dave. Yeah. Carter and Mike, very proud. So one and two to Devers. Giants with a one nothing lead. Stripley's going to get called here, and he just made it as this is popped out of play down the left field line. There you go. Take a bow. At a bib. Gamer. Ooh, close. Good one two pitch. And you're ahead in the count, and that's exactly where you want to nibble. In the left field. Conforto over. There's a challenge. Here's the throw, and it's going to be late. That's the first hit in the game for the Red Sox. Well, and it was impressive because it wasn't a hanger. And one thing about Devers is he will use the whole field. This Red Sox team hits a lot of doubles. This is on the outside part of the plate. See the head stay still right through it. Just taking what that opposing pitcher gives you. Hey, Giants have done a good job against Devers. That's his first hit in the series. So here's Duvall. The ball takes a strike. The ball has been around long enough now where you'd think he'd have a little bit of history against Stripling. Two for five. Two for six. Two down. Well, thank you very much for whoever put the defensive plan together because Wilmer Flores was right where he needed to be. Otherwise, that's a thing, and this game's tied. Here's Yoshida. Yoshida struck out. Against Alexander in the second. Out of play, another in two. Great day for a sun hat. 
She came prepared. Yeah. Where's it well? Hmm. One and two. It's rocking a hat. It's just a hat day. High fastball. It's two and two. Cincinnati not leading the Dodgers. Seven to nothing. Dodgers have had three home runs in that game in three innings. Reds or the Reds, I beg your pardon. De La Cruz, McCain, and Votto. Got him. For the Giants, Conforto to lead things off. The Flemings. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Francisco Giants Baseball Club, LLC. Giants and D-backs wrap up their upcoming four-game series by celebrating International Trading Card Day with Tops. First 20,000 fans at Thursday's game will receive an ex exclusive pack that includes Logan Webb, Lamont Wade Jr., and Camilo Doval. There's 10 Giants cards per pack. Lock in tickets at sfgiants.com slash promotions. They are very cool cards. We saw them. If you're a collector, you're going to want them. When it's time for a change, think Speedy, oil change, and auto service. Your trusted oil change tune up and break experts. Chris Murphy, the new pitcher now for the Red Sox, ninth time he's been in a game. Look at the numbers 26 strikeouts in 25 innings, an ERA of 1.80. Murphy, one of three left handers that the Red Sox have. At the start of the series, they had five lefties in their pen. Now it's been whittled down to three. Here he's facing Conforto. And a strike. Conforto has scored the only run in this game. Lines this one down the left field line, just foul. Ooh. No DH for me. Killer Kowalski, our ball dude. For Conforto, if you're hitting off Chris Murphy, you're going to see a pretty healthy fastball. Mid to the high 90s, more mids than highs. Cuts the ball. He's got a curveball slider and a changeup. All from a three quarter release. Check swing foul as it carries all the way out to behind the pitcher's mound where shortstop Reyes will come in. Only three hits in this game. Conforto stays alive. Matos and then Blake Sable. Out in front of home plate, Alfaro. Will make the easy play. Yeah, we showed this group earlier the Savannah Bananas with their traveling opponents, the party animals. They're in one of the luxury suites here. And a group that knows how to have fun. Yeah. They conquered the fear of having a good time a long time ago. And if you have an opportunity to see them, take advantage of it. Yeah. 
Of course, the Giants fans have been doing it, or baseball fans in general have been doing it. They've been in San Jose, Fresno, last night in Sacramento. Packed houses. So last night, about halfway through their game, the lights go off. So what they do? They signed autographs, played catch with people in the stands. Yeah, they put on a show until the lights came back on. And they finished the game. One and two to Matos. So that's on Murphy. Wow. Two violations in this game on Red Sox players. Justin Turner, that was a surprise. And now Murphy gets called a ball. Take a look at the lower rights. I mean, it's zero, and there's the violation. And my friend, you have waited too long. I mean, that, that was a one two count that went to a three two count in a hurry. And it is three and two. And this is tapped to Arroyo. So it doesn't hurt Murphy. Yeah, last night Hunter Pence played in the game for the Savannah Bananas. He came in on a scooter. He would fit right in. I guess he had a couple of at bats last night. How'd he do? One for two. Not a surprise. Here's Sable. That's another guy that conquered the fear of having a good time. That's true. Sable had a bunt single in the second. Here it's a ball and a strike. Well, because of that, now the Red Sox take away the bunt. Devers, the third baseman, in on the grass. I mean, that's the thing. If you're a hitter, you know you're going to go up and take a pitch. Show bunt. You know you're not gonna try and bunt it, but by showing bunt, you'll bring that third baseman in. Two and two. Phil <laughs> Sable will take his one time out that he gets. Looks like Murphy's still in the set position. <laughs> Misses in. It's three and two. And a swing and a foul off the screen behind home plate. Payoff. Got him. One, two, three inning for Murphy. Fifth inning coming up. Here's for a weekend interleague series. It'll start Friday, August 11th through Sunday the 13th. SFGiants.com slash tickets. Rangers right now are playing in in San Diego and there's no score in that game. So Yastrzemski comes out of the game. Jack Peterson comes in as Conforto moves back to right field. Peterson now in left. And here's Arroyo. It's not a it's Arroyo as he rolls this one. Crawford will circle around it and throw him out. So well, Royal retired on one pitch. A nice play from Crawford. In one perspective, he knows 
his opponent. I mean, opponent awareness to an infielder is everything because you know there are certain plays that you're going to have to hurry on if that hitter has speed. Arroyo has speed. Crawford knows this, anticipates, and he throws off the right foot and guns him down. If he tries to set his feet and throw it traditional traditional stride, he doesn't get him. Verdugo takes a strike. You know, you talk about that series between the Rangers and the Padres this weekend. Rangers have scored one run in three days. That's a big deal. Only because they've scored more runs than any other team in the big leagues. The 1 1 to Verdugo is a foul out of play. Just to our left in the club level. The Rangers as a team this year have scored 606 runs. The closest team to them are the Dodgers who have scored 578 so the Padres really have used their pitching to shut down an unbelievable offense. Yeah, it was you Darvish in the game yesterday. Verdugo's got a base hit. Now a message from Lazy Boy. It's the inventory overstock sell-off at Lazy Boy. Hurry in and save up to 50% on $5 million in factory direct overstock. Everything must go. Lazy Boy, live life comfortably. Well, we're waiting for a Red Sox pinch hitter. And uh, we don't know where he is. And maybe neither does Alex Cora. This is a big kid. It's going to be Cassis. Uh, Cassis, yes. We've been really impressed with this guy in this series. So Cass is hitting for Reyes. Tristan Cassis, former first round pick of the Red Sox. Well, he really not single handedly, but close to it, beat the Giants on Friday night. He knocked in two of the three runs, one which was a home run. Big curveball. Sable can't find it. Now he does. Verdugo on the year has got four steals. He's been thrown out twice. Gets underneath this one. Is Schmidt is doing the pop up dance and he'll put it away. And that'll bring up El Faro. Very bright, sunny day here. Not an easy assignment pop ups and fly balls. And in the next couple of innings, it's actually going to get worse. There you see is what they're looking at when a ball gets popped up or hit in the air. Little dribbler, Stripling's got it, takes a step and throws, and that'll end the inning. For the Giants, Schmidt's going to lead things off. Gov. Did you say Gov? Gov. So we got a bunch of changes as Schmidt takes a strike. Casas comes in to play first. Turner moves to second. Arroyo moves to short. Schmidt takes wide. It's a ball and a strike. One nothing Giants. There's your changes. Schmidt out of play. It's one and two.
Crawford and then Peterson. Schmidt off the end of the bat and a base hit. He needed that. I don't remember the last time he got a cheap hit. I guess there's no such thing. It's just that he didn't hit that on the on the button. Well, we're pre pretty used to it. every time he gets the ball hard, it's been getting caught here. Just reach out off the end of the bat. And that, folks, is a big league knock. Here's Crawford hit the ball well, but lined it to Duvall in center field. Here he takes in tight. Two balls and no strikes. Crawford way out in front and hits this one in a spot where there's some fans that didn't think they were going to get a foul ball. But they did. It, it, you know, you hope you see whoever gets that ball had a glove on because that's the eternal optimist up there. Crawford goes the other way. And it's under the glove of Devers and Schmidt is going to get to third. Wow. Well, I'm thinking a double play off the crack of the bat. And I think Devers is thinking the same thing. I mean, he can't believe he misses this ball. It just comes up, hits him with a thumb off in the center in the left field, and Schmidt coming into second base. Sees the opportunity. He never slows down. So instead of a double play, we get, Giants got nobody out. First and third, and something brewing. So here's Jack Peterson. This is the third different Giant to hit. In this spot in the order. Slater, then Yastrzemski, who doubled but then left the game, and we don't know why. And now Peterson. Peterson lifts this one into center field. Duvall racing in. He's got it. Here's Schmidt. He will bluff. Crawford does tag. And there's one out. If there's one out, he goes with nobody out. You respect the arm, and they know that Duvall's got a good, he's got a good arm. Duvall in center. Verdugo in right, those are your big arms in the Red Sox outfield. So pitching coach Dave Bush comes out. And really with Ruff Schneider in, in left field, he too has a good arm. I'm not really giving him the props he deserves. Wilmer today is struck out and he's rolled back to the pitcher. See Mark Hallberg, the third base coach, he goes all the way down with him and finally shuts him down and says, get back. And it had it been a one out situation, they'd have pulled the trigger. They'd have sent him. So Wilmer will hit with the infield in. I've seen this a lot in this series. And it's down low. Well, they may be able to very well pitch around Wilmer Flores. Well, they know how hot he's been. They've got an open base. If you're Chris Murphy, you're not going to give a whole lot to hit here. You don't have to. Foul, and that got Mark Wolbert. So does he's all right. I mean, this is where the third base coach. Really has to be a little closer to the hitter than he'd like to be. Out of play, and it's now one and two. 
Giants were in this spot a lot yesterday. Remember, they were only one for 13 with runners in scoring position. Well, I mean, that's the bad news. The good news is they're setting the table. Sooner or later, you are going to break through. You are going to get a hit that's got some dividends on it. Hit for Wilmer Flores. That'll score one. Crawford held up. It's two nothing. And there's a dividend base hit. And how many times have we seen him do this this year? And this is a pretty good pitch. I mean, that's not a, out over the plate. That's off the plate away, and he simply goes with the location and barrels it up. And there you see the strength of that arm from Verdugo. It's a good one. Crawford to third. Luciano. He gets a jam shot, and Devers is going to get Crawford in a rundown. And now the pitcher Murphy will apply the tag. With one out, you're going on contact, even with a drawn in infield. And by Crawford doing it, it eliminates the double play. Because if you're Devers and you see that he's not going, you're all of a sudden you're going to second. You have a chance to turn two and get out of the inning. So Chinese fans are a bit frustrated by that running play, but that was a smart play from Crawford's perspective. Here's Davis. Davis, it's tied up a bit and it's 0 and 1. Jam shot to second. Arroyo's got it and they get the force play at second to end the inning. Luciano made it close. Giants pick up a run, it's 2 0. The 1990s at 90s night right here at Oracle Park on Saturday, August 12th. Wear your best neon or flannel as the Giants host the Texas Rangers and arrive early to celebrate the 1993 San Francisco Giants team that won 103 games. Tickets available. Go to sfgiants.com slash promotions. Here's Ruff Snyder to lead things off. And he's going to take a pitch called low. I'm going to have to miss that game on the 12th. Why? I wasn't here. No. For the 103 win season. It's true. Dusty Baker's first year as manager. What an exciting year that was. My goodness. Yeah, it really was. Tough play. No play. We'll catch every pitch with the fastest internet from Xfinity with a reliable connection you can count on in the clutch even during peak hours. The next generation 10G network. So here's Turner. Turner's 0 for 2. And he takes a strike. Big rainbow arcing curveball. That's the thing about Stripling, you get that big 12 6 drop because of the high over the top release that he has. Good speed at first.
On the ground, Crawford's got it. Backhand flip, that's one and two. Turner just took a peek at Crawford, thinking, yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah, it's not the first time he took away a base hit from him. But what was creative about it, I mean, his ball scalded, one hop, bullet, and then a little backhand flip right over to Schmidt, who finishes it off. That was not an easy hop. He put it right in the sweet spot. And Ross Stripling saying, yeah, Crawford, my man. <laughs> Here's Devers who takes a pitch down low. Now you could face a guy with lots of power with nobody on and a two run lead. Swing and a miss. Pitch one and two. It's such a high arc that out of the hand you just think it's going to be high, and then it just starts this downward movement. It steals a strike. Not a lot of guys swing at that high curveball stripling. Stripling now with 54 pitches came in with two outs in the second. And a full count. And those fastballs up above the letters, those are by design. It's a lot of people to swing at that high fastball when he's right. Well, and he's been right today. I remember what Stripling told Dave and I about Evers. Loves that low pitch. Swing! You're going to miss. He got him. Four strike. Big dead. Three strikeouts for Stripling. Cup continues as the U.S. Women's National Team closes out group play against Portugal. Coverage begins Monday night at 11 with kickoff at midnight. Here's Conforto facing Chris Murphy and he takes a strike. Conforto was the first hitter that faced Murphy and he dribbled one back. To the pitcher and was thrown out. 1 1 pitch is outside with Luis Matos and then Blake Sable. Conforto. Underneath this one to Casas at first. And Casas with two teammates surrounding him backpedals and makes the catch. He's made some nice plays in this series on pop ups and you can add this one to it. it. This was not an easy play. We mentioned the sky and the sun that you're going to have to deal with. And you also have to remember the wind's going to push this thing back out towards the playing field when it goes down the right field line. And he has to catch it with a high backhander, not an easy play. Matos takes one to the backstop. Matos 0 for 1. Was hit by a pitch in the second inning. It's out of play. It's two and one. Hits this one on the ground and a base hit the other way. Casas was nearly playing far enough off to bag to get to that, but he just missed it. Nice back control and a two strike count. They go back away with a fastball and he hits it right 
through the right side. And Patrick Bailey's going to hit. Left hamstring tightness for Mike Yastrzemski. Yeah, he's had a hard time getting that hamstring right. That's a concern. Well, there's a young man we had a chance to visit with today, Patrick Bailey. He said something interesting, and it's true. He said he's in the minor leagues, married with a child. He said he gets to the big leagues, and everything's different. So they're all married, they all got kids. He said it's great. Not always the case in the minor leagues. No, it's not. It's actually unusual. At least in the lower minor leagues. So here's Bailey. And he takes a strike. <laughs> Pulls this one on the ground and it's foul. The other thing too is when you get to visit with a player and you're basically sharing the same space you get a better idea of how physical I mean he's put together really well yeah he's solid I asked him you need an off day today he goes yeah I'll take it in tight one and two. He did say a lot of interesting things. Well, the other thing he said was, you know, all the hard throwers that he faced were in double A. Time you get to triple A, so you got a lot of guys who could pitch, but they're not necessarily hard throwers. Ball back. You get up to the big leagues, and now you got guys that can pitch that can also throw hard. Well, you're right. You, you get to the big leagues, and you get the best of both. Interesting perspective from a catcher. Too high, two and two. Schmidt on deck. Really? We asked him, well, where do you like to hit away from this yard? He goes, well, you know, I, Coors Field was fun, although I hit a ball in Coors Field, I thought it was a home run, didn't go out. Where was the other ballpark he said? It, Cincinnati. Yeah, Cincinnati, another offensive ballpark. He says, I hit one there, I thought was going out, didn't go out. Hit out into right center field, but hanging up for Verdugo to get over there. He hasn't yet played in Arizona, which is one of the best ballparks to hit it because of the background. He'll like that park, absolutely. So here's Schmidt with two outs. Schmidt has been involved in both Giants runs today. He's got an RBI on a ground ball, and then he scored the second run in the fifth. There's a strike. Door in that little slider. This is cued off the end of the bat, and Turner will make the play and not in the inning. Giants do pick up a hit, but we will head down to the seventh. It's 2 0 Giants. Two openers Scott Alexander for the Giants. It was Brennan Bernardino 
And uh, the Giants scored off of Bernardino in the second, scored again in the fifth, and they lead to nothing. His stripling has done the bulk of the work after Alexander. As a matter of fact, he's done all of the work after Alexander. And this is Duvall. Strike two to Duvall, who's lined out to center and then hit a soft line drive to Wilmer Flores at first. Patrick Bailey, after his pinch hit, is now behind the plate. So no total total off day for Patrick Bailey. The ball stays alive as he falls off a really really good pitch from Stripling. Sixty pitches now for Stripling. Outside, one and two. I don't know if this is a sellout today, but I'm guessing that it's very, very close. Duvall watches this one run in on his hands. Two and two. Yeah, you don't want to hit him when you're hitting the count. There's your crowd. Crowds have been great the entire weekend. Lifted to left, hit well. Peterson back at the wall, hits the top of the wall. I think it hit the top of the wall, and it's gone. And it's a one run game. You know, I thought off the crack of the bat, he may have caught it out a little bit towards the end of the bat. But with his power, I mean, he didn't really need to hit a flush to get it out of here. And it was. And that may be the last pitch that Stripling throws. And let's see, did it hit the top of the wall? Couldn't tell. When it's time for a change, think Speedy. Oil change and auto service, your trusted oil change tune-up and brake experts. We'll be back. Pitcher now for the Giants will be the left-hander Taylor Rogers. Take a look at what he has done in 40 games this year: five and three with a 2.8 ERA. Been very, very good. 44 strikeouts and 35 and a third. Yoshido, the first hitter that Rogers will face, and this is a sharp ground ball to. Casey Schmidt, so one pitch, one out. And that'll bring up Arroyo. We saw Christian Arroyo when he first came up, former first round pick of the Giants. He was so baby faced when we first saw him. And, and, and now he's got a full beard. Well, he's still got a baby face. We didn't know if he could shave or not. So <laughs> now we know that he can. Oh, and two. Well, he's found a home with the Red Sox. Good for him. Uh, he was definitely one of those guys when he left the Giants organization you rooted for.
And Arroyo hooks that one into left field. That's an 0-2 base hit. It's just 2017. Did it sit then City Field? And you talk about a baby face. <laughs> Here's Verdugo. And Verdugo takes down low. He is right on top of the plate. I used to stand on top of the plate, and it was really simple. Stand on top of the plate and look in. And don't be afraid to get hit. Yeah. There's a strike. 2 0 snapper. Perfect location. And now this becomes a big pitch. Yes, it does. It's three and one. Especially with that guy looming in the on deck circle. Three and two on the pitch right at the knees. Peterson's going to give chase. So is Davis, but it's going to be in the seats. Lamont Way Jr. Maybe we'll see him today. He's going to have a little stiffness in his back. So Rogers loses Verdugo. It's the first walk Giants pitching is issued in this game. So here's Casas hitting for the second time. Tyler Rogers getting ready. At the knees, and it's 0 1. Koss is a good low ball hitter, and you would expect that a guy 6'5. Both teams with five hits. Giants with a one run lead. And a bit wide to even the count. The one one pitch and a high breaking ball one and two a good pitch I mean that looked like it almost started off at the hip of Casas and then crashed into the strike zone I mean, that ball left Rogers hand Casas gave up on it they had a little bit of a buckle thought for a second it was going to hit him you do that and can still put movement in the strike zone that's a big breaking ball. You buckle the guy once, you think you could do it again. One and two. Hit off the end of the bat. And coming in is Matos. And a double play. 
Boy, he made up some ground, didn't he? Well, I didn't think he had a chance, but his closing speed was impressive. And it certainly fooled Arroyo at second base. He might have made that unassisted. Top of the second inning, Scott Alexander struck out Masataka Yoshida on three pitches. A sinker, followed it by another sinker, and then he saved the slider for a two-strike surprise. Grab some pine meat. And that's our sage pitching decision. Here it's two to one. Our Savannah Bananas leading the folks here to take me out to the ball game. That man right there, Luis Matos, showed some closing speed on a ball that we thought was going to drop in front of him. Christian Arroyo at second base. I mean, he, he was a rock at a hard place, and finally he made the decision. Matos ain't going to get it, and he guessed wrong. It ended the inning. And just a great example of why the Giants love this kid out in center because he has got some kind of range. Yeah. I agree with you. I did not think he was going to be able to to track it down, but Taylor Rogers said, "Oh yeah, I knew that all along." So we just got the attendance: thirty-seven thousand and twenty-six. Watching the Giants now leading by a run. It's two to one. And they will have Crawford, Peterson, and Flores coming up here in the, in the bottom of the seventh. There's Iona, DJ Umami. She does a great job. Big part of the energy in this ballpark. She lights it up. Here's Crawford. Crawford is 0 for 2. He reached on an air in the fifth. Shoots this one on the ground and he's got a hit. Well, Jorritos Tequila believes nothing great happens without taking a shot. SF Giants fans share that same spirit. So here's to the shot takers on the field and off. Drink responsibly. Thank you. I'd have to do that in an hour or so. Drive responsibly? Well, that too. And there's the bunt. And they're going to get one there. And that's it. Right idea, but you don't want your exit velocity to be very high on a bunt. <laughs> well, I think his exit velocity on the bunt was about 96. That's just my estimate. We're actually being told it was 44 miles per hour, but still. You want the bunt to be about 20. Yeah, or less. So how far will the catcher going to come and take a slow walk just to work the clock working the clock. Josh Winkowski is ready to go in the Red Sox pin and Alex Cora is going to make a move. So it was Murphy to throw most of the bulk innings in this game. Gonna take all the time he could get for Winkowski. And now he makes the move. So when it's time for a change, think speedy, oil change and auto service. Your trusted oil change tune-up and break experts. We will be back. Now the hitters Wilmer Flores. There's your new pitcher right there. 
Josh Minkowski, the new pitcher now for the Red Sox, 37th game that he's been in, having a good season. 49 strikeouts against 16 walks, 3 and 1 with a 2.88 ERA. Take your bats against him, you're going to see a healthy fastball that'll be mid to high 90s. Got a cutter slider and a changeup to complement that good fastball. So, Wilbur Flores will hit. He's got the RBI in this game that has the one run lead for the Giants. And he doesn't waste any time. This is shallow right field. This is a tough play, and it's going to fall. And safe at second is Brandon Crawford. You could see right away that this was going to be in the Bermuda Triangle. That is a true Texas leaguer. And those are the kind of hits you get when you're going good. And for Wilmer Flores in this hot streak, he hadn't had many cheap hits. But Casas, I think he looked up. I don't think he ever saw it again. But you know what? You really have to give Crawford an assist, or Jock Peterson, rather, yeah. an assist, because he could have been doubled off easily. He read it well, and because of that, he's safe, and Flores has a base hit. Well, Lamont Wade is going to pinch hit for Luciano, and that's going to bring out Dave Bush, the pitching coach. You know, this is something we see every time there's a pinch hitter now. You see a, a visit from the pitching coach. And the reason I say it, it's unusual is because in, in the meeting you have before the game, you cover every hitter. You know how to get every hitter out, at least how the scouting report tells you how to do it. But yet, every time a pinch hitter comes in, you have the pitching coach who got there and they yeah. remind the, the, the pitcher. Don't have the meeting. It's an unnecessary. Yeah, don't have the meeting before the series. If you're going to do this every time. Yeah, look, Red Sox aren't the only team that, do, that does it, like you said. No, it's across baseball. It's not just the Sox. I'm not picking on them. I'm not picking on the Red Sox. No, don't do that. Here's Wade. And Wade takes the strike. One thing we learned early on when there was interleague play, you don't pick on the Red Sox. They'll knock you down like Don Zima. <laughs> uh. Swing. And a miss. Nothing in two. One of my favorite people of all time, Don Zimmer. Yeah, he was fun. We had him as a coach. Back in 1987, we went to the playoffs, and he was so good in that clubhouse. Great baseball man. Big chopper. That's one. And covering is Winkowski, and they get the double play. Eighth inning coming up. Giants insider Alex Pavlovich and Cole Kuyper featuring Dwayne Kuyper. Available wherever you get your podcast. Meanwhile, that's where I want to be. Out on the cove, Batman pulled in with his crew. Check out that ride. You think they're having fun? I do. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service. The trusted oil change tune up and brake experts. Here's Tyler Rogers. 48th appearance on the year. Facing the pinch hitter Jaron Duran who takes a strike. Duran with a day off until now. Is that hard when you're an everyday player you finally get a day off to have to come in late in the game. Well usually if you're an everyday player you're not used to being a pinch hitter but. Yeah, I guess you have to get used to it. This is hit off the end of the bat, and it's going to be a trap. And with the speed of Duran, it's a double. That is so typical when 
Tyler Rogers comes into the game. I mean, he's a guy that has the, the most cheap contact. I mean, that's a statistic. I mean, he, he, they just don't hit the ball hard, and it, it plays against him. I got to give Matos an A for effort here. Ball hit off the end of the bat, and with the speed of Duran, I mean, he can low fly. Here's Rev Sider. Thirty one doubles for Duran. Tap foul, nothing in two. So Duvall. Starting to get loose. It's a two to one lead for the Giants here in the eighth. Wow. Home to second in 7.9 seconds for Jaron Duran. That might be the fastest we've seen all year. Ooh, threw the riser in. He didn't miss by much. Pitching for the strikeout with a runner at second base and nobody out. I mean, he, his mind, he got it. He just didn't get it from the umpire. This is going to get the runner over to third. No message presented by Pacifico. Pacifico is a crisp golden lager. Brewed for those who know, it's what's behind a label that matters. Turner's had good numbers against Rodgers. He's five for 10. Giants play the infield in, and this is hammered to left, and this is going to be gone. Onage is onage. And just like that, the Red Sox take the lead. Well, he's got ownage against a lot of people. He has had a great career. And at 38 years old, he's still tormenting the Giants. A first pitch, get it in strike, and he was waiting for it. Looked at middle in. And just yanked it out of here. Here's Devers. And Devers takes outside. One ball and no strikes. <laughs> Lifted out into left center field for Jack Peterson. Two down, and here's Duvall. Duvall knocked one out of the park in the seventh. Giants in the eighth inning or the bottom of this inning. We'll have Davis Conforto and Matos. This is out of play two and two.
in tight full count. There's Yoshida he's on deck. And it'll be Yoshida. So a two out walk. And with Duval or Duval he is a guy who can steal a base. You have to pay attention to him. He's got four steals on the year. He hasn't been thrown out. Not a bad time to try and steal a base. There's a line drive into the seats down the right field line. It's 0 and 1. Heads up. In a miss. There's a Red Sox fan that's sitting below us that got a Red Sox jersey on. Just makes me smile. It's Mirabelli on the back. It's got a Doug Mirabelli jersey. Oh, two pitch coming up. Not a strike. It was wide. One and two. I think they only made two of those, and Doug Mirabelli's got the other one. Yeah, he's hanging on his wall in his office. <laughs> Guy's got to be a relative. Runner goes, swinging a pop up. Ooh. And it's lost in the sun by Davis. Did Yoshida lose the bat? He lost the bat. And he almost picked off Christian Arroyo in the on deck circle. I mean, that thing went right at him. I mean, you were watching the ball, I was watching the bat. Heads up. By the way, that was, Doval could have stole that base standing up. Two and two. Because that's the target, and Rogers has hit it. Fans think it's a strike. It's not. All right, killer. Go get him. And a bit. No DH for me. Rogers wants a new baseball, which will reset the clock. It's just how close it was to the strike zone. Would have been a pitcher strike. Got him anyway, and that'll end the inning. Turner's home run. Giants now trail by one. Toyota Summer Sunday. Therese, Carmen, Anthony, Cole. Highlights, interviews, and more. It's coming up right after the game. There's the game getting ready. Tune it up. We have some changes. What were they, Mike? I was reading the promo. New shortstop, new catcher now. Chang comes in to play shortstop. Long goes to, to uh, behind the plate. J.D. Davis with a swing and a miss. Giants two for 11 with runners in scoring position. Davis takes a strike. Yeah. 
Lines it to right, but it's going to carry to Verdugo. One out. And that'll bring up Conforto. Tight little breaking ball taken out. Strike one. Little dribbler to third. Devers throws on the run, and it's not in time, and it didn't matter. Casas couldn't hang on. It'll be a hit for Conforto. You know, Devers is playing back. Last thing he thought he was going to see from Conforto is a swing at dribbler. And it would have been close had Cassis been able to keep a handle on that one hopper. But boy, Devers really comes from out of nowhere to make this a close play. But the Giants get what they want. They get a runner on. Here's Matos. One for two. And a violation. And it's one ball and no strikes. Oh, we've seen three violations in today's game. Two by a pitcher, one by a hitter. And that's a big deal. That's a 1 0 count. Plus, Mato's got to look at a pitch. Runs that one in on his hands. Watch the clock on the right. It gets down to 0-0. Zero, zero. He hadn't pulled the trigger yet. That's a ball. Hit into left center field, but a good jump. And it's over the head and off the wall. Here. No, 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 no. They're going to put on the brakes. And Duvall's got to scurry back. Ooh. Close. Hallberg took a chance. He waved a bend and then he <laughs> stopped it. And it's a good thing he'd have been out by 30 feet. Look at Duvall. Just got a piece of it as it caromed into the wall and a nice recovery play by Ruff Snyder. And there you see the wave, and then all of a sudden the break. Well, here we go again with the infield in. And Bailey at the plate. And Bailey right off the bat, off the end of the bat, and it's 0 and 1. Good arms across the board, exceptional arms across the board in the outfield for the Red Sox. Ruff Snyder and left, Duvall in center, Verdugo and right. They all could throw. Little dribbler. The only play will be at first, and this game is tied. That's a thing of beauty. Hey, at this point, it doesn't matter how ugly it is. Get no. that run in. No, when you had so many opportunities the last two days, and you just have not been able to get the money hit, you'll take him any way you can get him. Especially down a run. Schmidt could give the Giants the lead, and it's low. One ball and no strike. What? Now let's take a look. Did he swing? He did not swing. You know, Junior Valentine or eight? Who was it? Quinn Wolcott. No. Adrian Johnson. Is it Adrian Johnson? Okay, the, the crew chief missed a call. Duvall got back up. 
One and one to Schmidt. Capper foul one and two. Good speed at third. Two and two. A little too wide for a fish bite. Crawford would hit if Schmidt reaches. Yeah, and he might. They, it's three and two. They know Schmidt has a uh, reputation to to chase. And that was a thought behind the last two pitches, and that was not an easy <laughs> pitch to lay off of for Schmidt. I mean, he wanted to swing. Here's the payoff. Unbelievable. They got him again. Casey Schmidt can't believe it. Now, Gabe Kapler's got to come out. He's got to get Casey Schmidt back in the dugout. There are no more extra players on the bench. Let's take a look. Did he go? Yep. Giants tied up. Here comes the ninth. The Giants will bring in their closer here to pitch the ninth. Miller Duvall coming in, 48th appearance. Tie game at home. You're going to have your closer pitch that ninth inning. Opponents hitting 188 against Oval. High velocity fastballs in a slider. Connor Wong is going to lead things off and he fouls it back. It's a pitch down low. So Adrian Johnson calls this one a ball. The Giants fans let him have it. I think Casey Schmidt was booing too. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the first pitch. This is the previous pitch. Oh, you got to call that one, Adrian. If you're going to call Schmidt, I'm sorry. It's three and one. Duvall threw 25 pitches in the game yesterday. Well, and he also walked the leadoff hitter to the guy he faced yesterday, and he wound up scoring. And here he is facing a 3 1 count. Out of play, three and two. Price glove. Got him. A nice comeback down in the count three one. <laughs> and he gets it with a slider. Long had two good swings on fastballs and here he waves through the, the breaking ball. Here's Verdugo. Verdugo's had a hit and a walk. Also a fly ball to right field. One ball and one strike. Hit. 
Detroit. And a miss. One and two. Right through him. And that'll cause Verdugo to take a little walk, call a timeout, reprocess it. Two and two. On deck is Casas. Pop up. Remember, Davis had a tough time with the last one, and he juggles it and puts it away. Ooh. Hey, maybe the play of the day. <laughs> it is a wrestling match, and I don't know how much as he saw. You see, he gets a glove on it, and it kind of rattles around. And uh, he manages to put it back in. Every out's a big out this time of the game right. at a tie score. That's how they do it at Elk Grove. Yeah, well, they, they get it done. So maybe it's going to go out and have a chat. Probably with something like this. Let's keep this guy in the park. That's not the that guy. The guy at the plate. <laughs> well, let's keep the panda hat in the park, too. We like panda hats. All right, here we go. Out of play. Well, Casas got in there and he got what he was looking for. Fastball challenge. <laughs> he got it again. He got another one. All right. Hey, could have been both. I thought he actually caught a piece. That's what I said, could have been both. Yeah. So Casas with a little jam shot single, and that's going to bring up. Chang, the shortstop. Casas does not have a steal. So this is Duran. Yeah, so it's Chang. So I was trusting the scoreboard. So it's Duran. Well done. You can't trust the scoreboard. So it's two balls and a strike. Pop up out of play.
Jock Peterson. This is a wrestling match, and he makes the catch. Oh, man. For the Giants to try to win it, it's Crawford, Peterson, and Flores when we come back. That was nasty. Richard Blyer is the new pitcher. He'll be facing a couple of lefties. And then Flores. Take a look at what he has done at 24 appearances. 14 strikeouts at 25 at third. And, uh, the high 80s fastball with a slider and a cutter to complement. Crawford with a single in his last at bat. And he rolls this one foul, and it's 0-1. Two to Crawford. One and two. Eight hits for the Red Sox. Nine hits for the Giants. Just a bit outside. That was a hard one to lay off, and somehow Crawford managed to do it. <clears throat> Other lefty Peterson on deck. Crawford fights off a good pitch. Blyer's throwing some nastiness out there in that outside corner. He's taking his, Crawford's legs out of both swings. Crawford fights that pitch off and goes the other way, and it stays at two and two. It's exactly what it is. It's a fight right now. Bounces this one to the outfield for Turner, who makes the play. And here's Jack Peterson. Peterson came in in the fifth as he bounces this one foul, and he's 0 for 2. It's like he was scooching up at the box there when he was starting to take his stride. Punch it. I mean, he, he can do a lot of things with the bat. I mean, obviously, he can hit the ball a long way, but he can also top hand the ball to left field against a hard throwing lefty or a nasty breaking ball throwing lefty. The bench is empty for both clubs. These both guys started with four on the bench, and everybody's been used. Foul, one and two. Peterson just got a piece and it allows him to see another pitch from Richard Blyer. Rolls this one to Casas at first. Two outs and here's Wilmer Flores. Got a couple of hits in this one. And 
he takes a strike. Red Sox pretty much played Flores straight away. A little bit of a play to pull with Turner at second base. That's about it. And tight to even the count. There you see how they stack it up. And as hot as Flores has been, I mean, he's used line to line, hitting the ball everywhere during this hot couple of months. This is going to carry out to Chang at short, and we're going to play extra innings. Tenth inning coming up. Tristan Beck is going to come in. The Red Sox will obviously have that ghost runner at second, and they catch a break. It's their fastest guy. See the numbers for Tristan Beck. Just recently called up. Anthony Scafani going on the injured list. Beck coming back up. And look what he has done this year. He's really throwing the ball well. 38 strikeouts in 50 innings, 1 0 with a 3 0 6 ERA. <laughs> And there's the speed you're talking about with Duran at second. That is a break. When the Giants hit the bottom of the tenth. They will have Wilmer Flores at second base, who has average speed at best. And this becomes a strikeout situation for Tristan Beck immediately. Ref Snyder will hit. And the Giants will have to keep an eye on the base runner, Duran at second. And you three outside corner at the knees, one ball and one strike. Twenty and a miss, one and two. Go right back down there again with that breaking ball. Or you go above the hands here. You got two good ideas off that location of the second strike. Got him. So Beck gets the strikeout he was looking for. And that changes things a little for the runner Duran at second base. We mentioned he's a base dealer. He's 21 for 23 on the year and this opens up an opportunity especially with the right handed hitter up to try and take third. So the Giants have to pay close attention to him. Turner homered in. The eighth inning. Beck just threw him right through him. Saw the target with Patrick Bader. They were sitting right on the hands in the inside corner with that target. And a quick 0 2. All right, Killer Kowalski, how'd you do? Better, babe. No DH for me. One, two. This will be another wrestling match. Everybody looking at everybody else, but it's Conforto who puts it away. And they get him in an 0 2 count. I mean, Turner, one of the best two strike hitters in the game. Oh, it's amazing how. Much panic you have when a, a ball's hit in the air as a pop up or a fly ball. I mean, normally you're thinking, yeehaw, daddy, but not today, not with the bright sun. Well, that fly ball to Jock Peterson to end the ninth was the one that got me. That was ugly with a capital U. Well, this conversation is you got a base open. The guy that leads this team in RBIs is coming up. What do you want to do? Walk him. And that's what they do. Uh, respect the stat sheet, especially in a tie ball game. Because guys who have good RBI totals, they're not they're not changing their whole emotion in that batter's box. They're relaxed, they're confident. Give them a base. You Chang. Hit buck 63. I mean, he hadn't hit this game yet. 
make him get the hit. Foul, and it's 0 and 1. <clears throat> Top of the tenth, if you just joined us. Where you been? 0 and 2. Breaking ball from Tristan Beck has been outstanding. He got the strikeout with Rough Snyder and a couple of breaking balls, and here he's got it set up in an 0-2 count to do it again. This time Chang doesn't chase it's one and two. Got him. What a great job. So the Giants trying to win it in the bottom of the 10th hitting second will be J.D. Davis who won the game. Yesterday it's three to three. As we go to the bottom of the tenth, the as Mike mentioned last inning, the ghost runner will be Wilmer Flores, and the new pitcher for the Red Sox is Chris Martin. Chris Martin, the big fella, six eight. Thirty-six time he's come in, three and one with a one six seven ERA. Good numbers 30 strikeouts against four walks. He inherits a strikeout situation with Wilbur Flores at second base to start things off here for the Giants at the bottom of the 10. There's Wilmer as he heads to second base stretch out those legs. Has a word with Turner. Lamont Wade's not going to hit. Is he will be walked intentionally. Remember his run doesn't mean a thing. And J.D. Davis will hit. With runners at first and second. You're right his run doesn't mean a thing. And it also sets up the force. So here's Davis. Jam shot. To short Davis has got a hustle and Turner can't turn it. That is a huge break for the Giants. We just assume that it that's a double play but now they get a first and third one out and the infield's going to have to come in again. Well remember Turner's not a second baseman. But he looked like he got a pretty good grip on it. <laughs> Well, Alex Cora going to come out and talk it over. You may not see all of the infield come in, certainly the corners. Yeah, and I don't believe they'll pitch to Conforto. You get, they don't. So they again. They stay away from the left handed bat. And they're going to put the pressure on the rookie Luis Matos. <laughs> Matos. Doubled over. Duran. In his last at bat. So here we go. And everybody's in the infield, the outfield. See if Matos is eager to get after that first pitch. And he does. And it's foul. The arms in the outfield are outstanding. You need a little more than a medium fly ball to score Wilmer Flores from third. So uh, Matos gets some more stick him. Pitch com is an issue now with Wong 
and Martin. In Martin's mind, he's pitching for one thing, a strikeout. Ball hit on the ground, the infield, they're coming home with it. Well, now you got to protect, kid. It's 0 and 2. Cutter on the outside corner, and that was a pitcher strike. <laughs> 0 and 2. Paralysis fastball, good pitch. I mean, you could backdoor two seam movement on that outside corner. You could go in on the hands. You get a breaking ball in the dirt, and you get a lot of opportunities with that pitch. It sets up a lot of things. Two and two. That's the pitch he wanted to get him with. Hey, he, he can do it again. I mean, he's. he's Patrick Bailey's watching from the on deck circle. Two balls, two strikes. On the ground. And they'll get one there, and that's all they'll get. So the bases stay loaded. And here's Patrick Bailey. And everybody can relax back on defense. <laughs> So it's up to Bailey where now it'll take a hit or a mistake by the Red Sox. And it's high one and oh. Bailey had an RBI in the eighth on a slow roller. Back to the pitcher. Off of, his, off of his foot, and it's a ball and a strike. Cutter perfectly placed on that inside corner. That's what he's aiming for. Inside corner up on the hands. He's done a good job with runners in scoring position. Oh, one of the best on the Giants team. I mean, he's a money hitter. That's what those numbers tell you. Center field, center field, and we'll go to the 11th. It remains three to three. Four game series. Get your tickets, go to sfgiants.com slash tickets. A pivotal National League West showdown. Seattle shut him out today. Merrill Kelly started that game, so he's the one starter the Giants won't see in that series. That's a good thing. Yeah. So Chang comes out, he's the ghost runner, and again, the Red Sox have excellent speed on the base pass. And once again, for Tristan Beck, this is a strikeout situation. Get out to right. Conforto's got a good arm. And there will be no attempt to tag. One out. Or you can have a one pitch fly out even better. A non productive out was the key. So here's Connor Wong, the catcher. As he goes oh, on one. He has got a quick trigger finger. My word. Now it's the Red Sox dugout that's complaining. 
out of play 0 and 2. Buck's got a good break of ball today and he knows it. Got him. Talk about a good breaking ball, and you know you have a good feel with it. That's a late breaker. He's putting it right where he wants it. Here's Verdugo. Out of play on a pop up. No thought whatsoever from Gabe Kapler to, to put Verdugo on base with Casas, the left handed hitter on deck. Strike another than two. <laughs> Jack Peterson. Side retired. Bailey will be your ghost runner. Schmidt will be your hitter. You know it, a former giant is now on the mound. Just a recent former giant is on the mound for the Red Sox. Yeah, a week ago he was a giant. It's the seventh time that he has come into a game this year. 1.42 ERA with eight strikeouts and six and a third. He's a hard thrower. Two types of fastball. You'll see mid to high 90s and a slider and a changeup. More sliders than changeups. Yep, out. Best seat in the house. So Bailey will be your runner at second. And Schmidt, we'll see if Schmidt tries anything creative to get Bailey to third. The Red Sox think so. And he takes low as he shortens up to Bunt. Now, if you're going to bunt, you want to bunt down the third base line. You want that third baseman to come in and vacate his position to field the ball. And that's the type of pitch you want to bunt. A high breaking ball is. You see a lot of that from Jovera. Holberg came down and I haven't seen that in a long time where he got close enough where he actually said something to Casey Schmidt. Well, Casey Schmidt has, has not looked at Holberg at, at all. I mean, he's got his instructions. Well, I mean, another one. I mean, the, the hardest. Pitch to bunt is a is a high fastball at the letters. And that ball was down there below the belt. That, that that's one that he should have tried to make a bunt on it. Now with two strikes, I don't know if they'll keep it on. I doubt it. Well, take it back. I'm really surprised that Jovera has thrown anything but a fastball. It's three and two. Out of play. And he is right on him. Remember, you, you can play around a little bit three and two with first base open.
this wouldn't even close. Did he get him twice? I know it hits the elbow. That's the glove of one. So is this Cora? I think it is. It's got to be a pep talk, right? Yeah, it's got to be a pep talk. But Giants showed bunt for most of that at bat. I don't think they're going to bunt Crawford. I would be surprised. Yeah. See what the Giants have done with runners in scoring position this series. They have been four for 34. They have left 28 men on base. And they have a chance to win the series. And they have a chance to win the series. So we will see what Brandon Crawford does and maybe the Giants will see if Javera is wild or not. Crawford lays down a perfect bunt and everybody's going to be saved. Wong couldn't pick it up. And I'm surprised but I'm not surprised at the ability to get down a perfect bunt. And Wong knew. I mean, they, they may give Crawford a hit on this. It, it, they should be. Wong knew it was do or die. He tried to spear it barehanded his only chance. And when he couldn't get a grip, everybody's safe. So here's Jack Peterson. And now again, everybody's in. Down low. Again, great arms in the outfield. You need at least a medium fly ball. One to measure, one to rake. One ball and one strike. He gets to a three ball count. All bets are off. It's a count that he does not feel comfortable with. Two and one to Peterson. And this game is over. And the Giants get the hit with runners in scoring position to win the game. So Mike they take two out of three. Well and they persevere. The bad news is they couldn't get the money hit but they kept setting the table and they wind up with a very very well played series from both clubs and they take the series and now they've got momentum going in to the matchup with their rivals in Arizona coming into town tomorrow. Just great baseball, great crowds. And Jock Peterson sends everybody home happy. Giants pick up a game on L.A. And uh, they also pick up a game on the D-backs who are right behind them. So what a nice afternoon here at the yard. And the final score goes like this. It's the Giants four. In the Red Sox three. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for Toyota Summer Sunday. And that's going to start right now.